What we do, our community is, um, first of all, we're Dominicans, so we contemplate and we share the fruits of our contemplation. And the way in which our community does that is we take care of people with incurable cancer. Our homes are all, we give care for free. Um, so we do not charge for any care um, to the family, insurance, Medicare, Medicaid, and all of the care is done by the sisters themselves. Um, so our apostolate that we have in our community is to care for those with incurable cancer. Um, but that comes from, our ability to do that comes from our contemplation. And so the time that we spend in contemplation with God, um, we leave the chapel and then go to the patients and care for our patients. And then as after we care for our patients, we also have time again in the chapel um, to draw strength from our Eucharistic life, um, our holy hours, our prayer, uh, common together. Um, and then we also bring the needs of our patients to God in the chapel. Our charism is prayer, praise, and evangelization. Hope you live a deep life of prayer. Our day is ordered around communal prayer and personal prayer. Uh, we continually live a life of praise and thanksgiving to God. And evangelization, we seek to draw all people to a personal relationship with Jesus through the power and gifts of the Holy Spirit. And this includes retreats, parish missions, youth ministry, speaking at conferences, radio, prayer ministry, and praying for healing for others. As consecrated women, we do many, many things, but the most important thing is not actually what we do, but who we are. As women consecrated to Christ, it's our spousal relationship with Christ that motivates and makes fruitful all the works we do. So from that union, so my service in the chancery offices and the apostolic and catechetical endeavors that I'm involved in. Well, in our community, our charism is making the merciful love of Christ visible, which we do through just a variety of different sorts of ways. Ultimately, it's through our union with our Lord and that spousal union in my community. So I actually, it was a while before I began discerning religious life. I was 30 years old before I began discerning. By that point, I had gotten a PhD in biochemistry, and but there was this emptiness, there's something missing. I started falling in love with the Lord, realizing that what I, that nudging that I felt for a long time, that was Him calling to me to be His own. And when I finally jumped in and followed, which I'm so glad I did, after I made first profession of vows, I was asked to come here to teach science at Franciscan. So I've been doing that. You know, yes, there is in the classroom, you know, teaching, you know, the nuts and bolts, the mechanics of how you do that, but it's so much also just loving each of those students and really helping them to encounter the Lord in new ways in each moment of their lives and also just totally trying to be present to my sisters, loving each person I encounter and just really seeking the Lord in each of their faces as well and in that time in prayer too. The community asked me to be in charge of the sisters in formation, so what they call mother mistress. So I take care of the postulants that first year as they enter into religious life and then I am in charge of the novices until they profess. I give them, they attend the seminary so they can get their masters in theology, but also everything that has to do with theology of religious life and documents uh, of the church that have to do with religious life. I study them with them, I teach them. So I do that, but my favorite part about that, what do I do, is that we have every week what we call a colloquium so I meet with each one of my sisters in formation once a week. And just to see how they are doing, to see how they are walking with the Lord, what the Lord is telling them, uh, what difficulties they might be having, either with academic difficulties or spiritual difficulties. And it's so beautiful for me, and it's really an honor when I get to see their growth, especially their spiritual growth. It's so beautiful how I receive them as postulants with uh, no notion of really what religious life is because what you hear is so different from what religious life is once you are in the convent. So to walk with them during those first three years of religious life is just so beautiful to see how they grow, they mature. It's an honor for me and a very humbling experience.